Hi guys, this is Jason Zayak from Nathaniel School of Music. In this lesson, we are going to learn how to practice the piano or pretty much any musical instrument with the metronome, focusing specifically on subdivisions. So you're not going to use the metronome just for its beats. You're going to, yes, use it for the hit points, but then practice music inside of it. We have done another lesson on using the metronome. It's a rather detailed lesson more on how to practice various things on the metronome. We leave that in the description so you could perhaps watch that lesson. It'll be nice to watch that after this lesson actually. So check out the description later after watching this one. Uh, I'm going to divide the lesson into a few topics. First of all, I'm going to show you how to set up a metronome for practice. A lot of students have asked me this question. I'll show you that. I'll use an app. I'll show you how you can do it uh, in a way which works for, for your comfort zone. And then we look at how to actually practice it using a very simple set of music, probably just a, a major chord, a minor chord, maybe a simple chord progression or two. And let's look at different subdivisions. Subdivisions is where you divide the beat into units. So you divide by two, divide by three or divide by four. And then we'll explore the challenges of practicing with this particular ecosystem. When you practice with subdivisions or Otherwise, when you practice with the metronome, you, you kind of get a reality check. How good are you actually with respect to time? So we look at all the challenges involved using the metronome. Having said all that, the metronome is a very fun and inspiring tool. So I would urge you to use the metronome generally while practicing or composing or even improvising because it can motivate you or inspire you to create music. That's another <clears throat> that's another interesting feature. So let's get cracking. Before we do, it'll be awesome if you could hit that bell icon and hit the subscribe button on our Nathaniel School YouTube channel. And you could also consider getting the notes of this lesson and other previous lessons with notation, my handwritten notes, MIDI files, backing tracks, wherever applicable, waiting for you on our Patreon page. Let's get cracking. First of all, how to set up this thing called the metronome. So first off, you could install this metronome app called Pro Metronome, which works perfectly fine on Android and iOS devices. It's also completely free and it, it, I think it's the best sounding one of the lot and it's useful on stage as well because it has a lot of pro features which you can purchase later. But for the most part, it's free. So the first thing I like to do is learn how to adjust the tempo. So you can do that with the slider and... Uh, you have, right now I'm adjusting it and I've set it up to 60 beats per minute. This is how it sounds at 60 beats per minute. So one, two, three, four. One. Now you could assume this to be four by four or the way I set it up, I can set it up without any accents. So what I mean by that is the metronome normally will come sounding like this with that higher pitch sound, right? The the higher, higher uh, bell-like sound or the tick sound. So what you could do or what I like to do is first of all, disable it and keep all the sounds of the metronome to be the same. So then you don't need to look at it. You're forced to, you know, or you don't need to look at this. You can just put it aside, put it in front of you and just play because you can assume what the one is. I don't think you need to know what the one is with a different sound unless you're recording or doing something more uh, specific. So those are the basics of the metronome. Install the app, figure out the settings, uh, learn how to adjust your tempo. Time signature maybe, but for the most part, you can just set the tempo at whatever you feel and then try and play along. Okay. The next thing when you're setting up the metronome, before you start playing, I would urge you to first move your body to feel the pulse. One, let's say it's a four by four song. So one, two, three, four. One, two. Before you even play the piano or guitar or whatever instrument, first try and count with it. One, two, three, four. One, two, 
three you could also count it in a more animated way what i mean by that maybe the last four could be 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 sort of three staccatos and one legato 2 3 4 1 it brings you back into the cycle 3 Four or maybe say the one, the first beat of the bar a little louder. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. There we go. Four, one, three, four. So these are ways to 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 make sure that you're moving to the pulse and you're feeling the time signature. The next thing you need to do before you start playing is the divisions of the beat try to figure out a way to say the beat divisions while the metronome is playing so when we divide the beat we can divide by 2 we can divide by 3 and we can divide by 4 when we say 2 for the most part you can say 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 so that and which you say will be a 1 and 2 will be inside the metronome hit so if this is what the beats are 2 3 4 the ands will go 1 and 2 and and so the and is inside the hit point right 1 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 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 now if you divide by 4 you can have four units within this one hit which you can vocalize as 1e e and 2e e and 3e e and 4e e and 1e 1e e and a so and will be at the 50% mark e would be at the 25% mark a would be at the 75% mark let's see how that sounds 1e e and 2e e and 3e e and 4e e and 1 you could also move your head while you're counting to the pulse 1e e and 2e e and 3e e and Forty. So we've gone from one and two and three and four and one and two and three all the way now to one e and two e and three e and four e and one e and two. Keep moving your body or at least your head. One e and two e and three. And then we can even divide by three. So to divide by three, you want to say something like one and two and three and four and one and two. And what helps me with three? or triplets is to move my head sideways that tends to help sway your head if that makes sense so 3 2 1 start 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and again i am saying the one with the on beats with a bit more intensity 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and Two and three and four and right. So before you even start playing with the metronome or the click track, just keep in mind that our body needs to move, and we need to be able to count the subdivisions before playing. When you play the piano or any instrument in the real world, you're not going to align every note with every hit point of the metronome. It's not going to be that easy. For for example, you may not want to play like this. it's not going to sound very interesting so what we tend to do is we'll go inside it and this is at the beat level this is at the subdivision dividing by 2 3 dividing by 4 and so on so you get the point i hope where 
when you're playing the piano in the real world you're not going to play every beat aligning with the metronome this is something which people get wrong just to make sure that we are on the right track not losing time a lot of people will then tend to double up the speed you will start playing at 120 or or 240 which is ridiculous because the point of the metronome is to make you be an independent musician to play better on time right so that everyone relies on you rather than the other way around and before we get started with the piano part of the lesson i just wanted to mention that when the metronome goes faster it becomes more of a physical activity to get your hands aligned with or your muscles to be able to play at that particular speed but it's a bit easier on the mind because you're less dependent on the metronome or you're less dependent on time you're going more with your finger finger capability however if the metronome is slower it becomes a lot more mentally mentally grueling so to speak so learn the metronome at both fast speeds as well as slow speeds let's now get started on the piano with some music so i have for you the g major chord very simple g major is g b d now you could play this either b d g d g b those are its inversions g b d b d g d g b you could also consider the g minor chord if you like the minor vibe g b flat d B flat D G D G B flat G B flat D Okay now practicing this with the metronome what will be interesting is if we consider some arpeggio playing so i'm going to take the metronome and demonstrate a very simple arpeggio phrasing for you to so let's start by dividing by 4 then we'll go into dividing by 3 so this would be 1e e and 2e and uh, as we counted earlier 1e e and 2e uh, and uh, so the drill would be take the g major chord and roll it so what we call as an arpeggio pattern or an arpeggio roll Now here's the thing if your fingers are not able to play at that speed no problem at all let's do eighth notes instead which will be let's first count it 1 and 2 and 3 and starting 1 and so maybe start with eighth notes and then go to 16s Right now at this particular point you may want to pause the video and try it out for yourself with the metronome and just see if you're able to get it just see if you're able to align yourself with respect to the metronome uh th- that's the point of this video it's to just figure out what are the challenges of practicing with it and to ensure that you're actually using it well because sometimes we just do it for the sake of it we don't learn or gain anything from the process so when you practice with the metronome what you need to do is get the consistency and the longevity what i mean by that is don't just do the exercise and stop and say oh i'm fine with it no you're not you need to do it for a period of time my suggestion is if you're doing an exercise or a pattern at least for 30 seconds so look at the number of repetitions i've already done it eight times actually now if you pause the video somewhere during the le- lesson and if you've tried it out and if you found some problems along the way let's figure out those problems let's address those problems first of all the two basic issues are you're running away from the metronome or you're running behind or you're lagging behind the metronome why are you lagging behind maybe the speed is too fast so you'd need to then dial it down a notch maybe 60 is too fast maybe you'd want to go to 50 or 55 if you're speeding up that doesn't mean you're playing faster 
or you're able to play faster or you need to dial it faster no that means that you're not in control over your vehicle you're going to crash your car very soon so you may w- be able to drive it about a few meters few hundred meters but you don't want to crash the car you want to be consistent at the same speed or in this case the whole song so what you need to ensure is longevity consistency and so on and this is an example if you're lagging behind or racing so this would be an example of racing see it's not and now to get back it, you have to the best way is if you feel internally that you're not following it you should just stop you should not even try to recover so that's my advice so let's say you start fairly well now you you rush or you make a mistake or two just stop maybe stop the metronome or keep the metronome running take a breather have a sip of water and then continue the mission okay you wanted to be consistent another challenge is you run but you need to come back now you need to look at a few cues for that right the first thing is the one beat or the down beat of the bar which i told you earlier which was so important so as you play this figure out which note is on the down beat if you look at this pattern it's low middle high middle low middle high middle so my low note appears to be always at the down beats let's just figure that out 4 1 2 3 4 at least i've designed the pattern that way 3 4 so this thumb needs to So even if you're rushing or lagging just focus on the thumb. This sounds bad but at least you're not you're not leaving the click. There we go. So focus on the down beat, focus on the one. you should be good actually e 4 1 2 3 4 if there are still some challenges involved i would encourage you to alter the 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 style or the vibe of each note which you're playing look at all the properties of musical notes in general one is volume so you can make one note louder in re- with respect to the other the other thing would be duration one note could be shorter or longer with respect to the other or others you could also look at altering your pitch maybe you need more pitch variations so we look at all the three now and trust me the the inherent properties of sound itself will help you be more on time maybe you're not analyzing the the changes of sound it's almost like reading anything on a piece of paper a the paper will be of some kind of a color usually white or black and then the ink or the color or the writing pen which you use will always be a contrasting color if it's a black background you're probably going to write with a bla- white or a lighter color and uh, vice versa so it's the same with music you need to have a contrast within your brain for all you know the reason why you're not keeping time is because you don't have that the basics of what you need for your year which is contrast you need to have a strong beat and a weak beat a loud beat a soft beat a long beat a short beat stuff like that or a high pitched beat and a low pitched beat so let's look at that maybe again this lesson is primarily focused on the challenge of playing on time with the metronome and the rewards are plenty once you get this so this is one of my probably very few lessons on youtube which is musically rather boring because i'm just going to take one chord throughout the lecture but stick around stick with me this is more to improve your playing you can do this with any of the other glamorous set of notes and melodies out there so the first thing we look at is working with volume 
and I'd encourage you to maybe play the one beat, one, two, louder, or the down beats, one, two, three, play those loudly, and all the other beats, play those a bit softer. So, one E and two, remember we counted this at the beginning of the class, one E and two E and three, let's see how that can work. So, I'm slamming my thumb. This is creating a smaller package or a smaller cycle in your brain. And human beings love cycles. Earlier, if the volume was more consistent, there's no cycle being created for the mind, right? So, loud, soft, 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 loud, soft, 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 loud, loud at the ones. There we go. Tuck, tuck. You could also say things like one E and two E and three. Say that loudly while you play. It will motivate you to play that downbeat louder. And hopefully your timing improves. Play along with me. If you wish, let's do eighth notes. Keep it simple. Down. Down down loud now what is the other property of sound which you can adjust in your playing of the arpeggio you can then make it legato and staccato legato would mean long note staccato would be shorter note so let's try and play around with that with the click so You may find it a bit of a tricky challenge at the beginning, but over time, again you're setting up a cycle. La long short 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 long short 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 legato staccato uh, three times. So let's look at that. Why not do one staccato and then three legatos? Let's see how that works. You're just giving yourself a kind of a jolt, you know, to recycle the brain to, to, to eventually play better and group these things in smaller chunks rather than an endless stream of information. Okay, you can also adjust your pitch. So wherever, you, if you feel you're lacking timing, if you're running or lagging, you could then go and focus on that G note which you're starting with and change it believe it or not you may think oh you're changing notes won't this make it more tricky i think it'll make it easier from the point of view of timing because you're creating that distinction of notes which forces you to feel the subdivisions and play with the metronome there we go So, variations of volume, variations of note duration and variations of pitch will further improve your metronome capability. And remember to start slow. 60 beats per minute is what I'm using for this lesson and let it be 60 itself. If you need it to be a bit faster or slower, well and good. And when you're practicing, it's always a healthy practice. If your goal is, let's say, 60, try to start with 50, go a bit slower and then end up a little faster maybe 60 could end up with 80 so then you have that confidence to play your music in different speeds so we also learned triplets at the beginning of the lesson when we were counting why don't we also try and play this arpeggio pattern as a triplet so triplets again would be one and a two and a three and a four and a... there we go one and a so I'm just doing G, B, D, G. Enough of this G major. Let's make it G minor now. One and a two and a three and a four and a... To make this interesting, maybe you could play G, B flat, D with your thumb. 
index finger and middle finger and for some nice contrast pitch contrast you could add the top g with your pinky create a swaying feel with your body there we go these are triplets you could say one and two and three so there are three divisions within the pulse which is running at the rate of 60 beats per minute there we go so this is what i want you to practice i'd like you to practice semi quavers as well as triplets and just to add to the party i'll give you a few more patterns for the semi quavers on the g minor chord just to make it a bit more interesting maybe if you're not so much of a beginner if you've been playing the piano for a while this could help so next pattern would be something like this now you could do g b d b g b d b or a pitch contrast with your pinky finger g b d b g b d b g b d b just the high note stuff like this okay so you can modify by choosing your thumb for the root and then adding the octave at the top so in conclusion i'm going to talk about the importance of the metronome and how you need to use it alongside you for all of your practice routines or uh, work on the piano and as a musician in general first of all the metronome tells you how good are you actually as a player it's a great reality check because you don't need to rely on other people telling you you know whether you're playing well or not well unless of course the other person telling you is a teacher or something so a great way for you only to know if you are a good player is are you able to play with the metronome not just for a bar or two for the whole song or for the whole section it will be tough initially but if you can play with the metronome then the control of the song is in your hands If you've practiced hard enough, you're going to execute it. If you've not practiced hard enough, if you're like 90% there, you're not going to execute it that much because we have to also keep in mind stage fear, pressure of performing in front of other people, recording studios. These are not easy environments. You're not going to be playing the piano just in your bedroom so to speak right so in all these other rather hostile environments the pressure grows so keep the basics right can you play on metronome it's a very important skill okay the other importance of the metronome is if you are a studio recording musician or if you want to get into recording or music production this is a very important skill because every track which you layer in a software in a daw recording software is one after the other you're probably going to start with the piano the piano needs to be in time so you have to record that with a metronome if there's some problem there then you're doomed because the guitar or all the other ingredients will not sit with the piano or you do the piano off time you don't know it's off time then you record the next thing on time then you realize oh man the piano was wrong so these are some of the problems you're going to face also as a recording artist you need to understand even if you play a simple chord progression just four chords You may have played this on stage before. You may have played it at home. You may have played it a bunch of times. But if you've not played it with a metronome and recorded it, you're never going to know how good you sound and you'll realize that even the simplest pro chord progression is not going to be that easy. Anyway, the the practicing with the metronome also allows you and gives you the confidence to focus on the music. The the irony here is Yes we practice with it but eventually it just becomes a part of us so we we are the metronome we kind of subconsciously become the metronome and yeah it's very important to to get confident with your song that way not relying on the metronome or another musician or the drummer okay and then i think 
the metronome itself is an inspiring tool i would love to talk more about it but there's a there's a video in the description on all the techniques of how you can use the metronome to actually set it up well using the app and use it uh, to to benefit improvisation and composition so check out the video in the description so it's an inspiring tool and last but not least i would like to add that when you play music with a metronome especially when you do random stuff like fast pentatonic licks you know you don't actually know what you're playing but if you have to play that on a metronome you know exactly where every beat is aligned and you know if you're actually playing right or wrong so you really understand what you're playing so these are the reasons why i would recommend you to practice with the metronome and the importance of the metronome and just to conclude what we've done so far is we started by setting up the metronome on an app i'm using this app called pro metronome then we looked at taking a simple a beat structure and counting it and getting the body to vibe organically with the pulse and then we took a simple g major and g minor chord looked at different beat subdivisions and tried to play an arpeggio pattern and then we looked at the challenges if if any and the challenges can be uh, overcome by looking at all the contrasting properties of sound and music in general which are volume the duration of the notes and the pitch so by adjusting that you create a nice looping cycle within the brain and our, the body loves cycles so that's what you're trying to do and you stay on time and you help yourself stay better on time and follow the click better so hope you found this lesson useful hope you can apply it in your music do let us know what you thought about the lesson in the comments also if you'd like to learn something else do feel free to write and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and turn on the bell icon for notifications if you haven't already cheers catch you in the next one